because we are all tied to it together. And part of the puzzle is none of us can get out of the way of this freight train alone. What an interesting and different puzzle. So tell me I had more to do with setting in motion the freight train that now threatens you and me. You may wish to note the fact that you are lashed to the track a little closer to the train than I am. Tell me I have to do more than you do, and I will agree. But let's all recognize we are lashed to the same track, with the same train coming, and that there are two dimensions to this problem that are different that we must keep in mind every cop, every month, every discussion. We are racing a ticking clock that ticks for us all. And second of all, in this problem, nobody solves it alone. Either we all succeed together or we all fail. An interesting point for those of us who are humans on this planet. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Peter. I think that's, that's very helpful, put a perspective on, on the train. I'm, I'm just curious, you know, Gail, you have to, to deal with the train and I, you know, your company is, is, is one of the leaders in thought and in, in, in action, but nevertheless you still have to compete. And it's real world and it's, you know, it's a, a, a more and more competitive industry. It used to be that power was very local and there was nobody in there. It doesn't work that always like that anymore. From the, the kind of the menu of solutions that have been offered to you, you know, cap and trade, uh, CDM, uh, MFIs, board the tax adjustments, taxes, which one appeals to you? I think the point I would make here is that we need something that's going to address the broad range of solutions that has to happen in the electricity sector. Over and above all the energy that needs to be saved and all the efficiency improvements that need to happen in various industrial sectors, all the conservation that we should do as individuals, the electricity sector has to be substantially decarbonized. The, the menu I read you is, is the menu we have. The current mechanisms uh, are helpful, I think, for things like renewable energy. They'll, they're helpful for small projects. As Fernando said, that it is not at the scale of the national development of energy in China or India. Instead, it's at the scale of, of the gap between compliance and, uh, and current emissions in uh, countries that have accepted binding targets. So we need something that would embrace a substitution of gas, for example, for coal, something that uh, will help bring carbon capture and sequestration into the market, uh, a plan in, in certain countries for nuclear power, et cetera. Uh, setting a price of carbon, I think, is helpful, but the cost of those options I just mentioned to you have very different prices of carbon. And in fact, the current CDM uh, that's going to renewable projects today is not really paying the full cost of the carbon because we're getting the rest of it in terms of a differential tariff, which means the people of China are paying for the rest of uh, the cost of that carbon. So uh, I think a cost of carbon is helpful. I don't think it's uh, adequate. Uh, again, I'll refer back to, uh, to our report. We have a very comprehensive uh, review of the kinds of challenges and kinds of policies that can be helpful. I don't think there's a soundbite answer. Thank you. Kathy, when you go to the countries, to your client countries, what kind of advice do you give them in terms of policies? You know, it, it, this is, you have been, the World Bank and carbon finance have been the pioneers in this. And we applaud. And you know, what you have achieved is just tremendous and has shown the way for CDM. Do you see this being scalable for five, five, for five billion to 50 billion to you know, 500 billion? Or do we need a different instrument? Do we need other policies? Do we need this super fund to deal with this? Do we need to blend you know, private with public and, 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 and policy? How do you see that? Um, I think first you have to start on a little bit more on, on the demand side. Now, what we've been doing up to now is experimenting on different financial techniques and pushing them out in pilot programs and early CDM initiatives. We're trying to, to complement that now with actual work on the ground 
in the Chinas of the world, Indias, we're doing this in Indonesia, to help them think through exactly these questions. Given their energy needs, given their access to energy needs, um, and the tools, um, geographic capabilities, uh, first principles, what is a low carbon path? What does it look like? What are the cost curves? Um, what could be financed through, through a, a reasonable um, price that we know is in effect, at least right now, on, on carbon finance? What is going to require some types of, of subsidy, either from the international um, world or from government itself? How to square the circle? How to build a policy framework that makes sense? So this is work that's undergoing right now. We believe that if we can get these low carbon path um, pathways uh, with some good analytics behind it, then it'll be easier for us to, one, move more programmatic. You talked, my friend Anna talked about sector-based approaches. Um, and that's what the new carbon partnership facility that we're doing um, really hopes to achieve. Helping a country to say, we really want to have a major energy efficiency program in province X. Well, what's the regulation behind that? What's the role of the private sector? How do we finance it? How do we build a financing mechanism? And then finally, how do we monetize that into carbon reduction credits and the like? So working on both the, 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 the financial engineering to make it happen, but the policy and the planning framework that gives the incentive to the private sector or the public sector to put those plans into place. So that's the kind of scale up that we think is going to be required. Fernando, do you recognize?